Whom shall I fear? And you are my reward. The solid rock upon which I stand. You love is unconditional. You will Lord. So we call you by your covenant keeping name Yahweh. 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 We call you Yahweh. It reminds us that you are immovable, invincible. You are not shaken, no matter what we are going through. You are our refuge, our strength, our hope, our desire, our fortress. You are the reason we are standing. You are the reason we're still here. My dwelling place, my safe refuge, desire, desire. of my heart. I will forever, I will forever love, and trust. love and trust. Beside your life, life is unconditional. You alone you are. You alone you are. We call you. From the beginning to the end. From eternity to eternity. The ageless, changeless God. Whose love is endless. Whose power is unsearchable. Whose wisdom is beyond all that we could further understand. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. No one else should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. To inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble. He shall hide me. In his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle. He shall hide me and set my feet up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies who are around me. Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy and I will sing. You alone in the tabernacle of God. The sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes I will sing. Praise us to the Lord. You are my source, you are my strength, you are my shield, you are my buckler, you are my ray God, you are my shade upon my right hand, you are Lord. You are my son, the brightness of my glory, my God, my guide, my Lord, my king, my fortress, my future, my first, my present. In you I live and move and have my being. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Yes, you were.
Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory. Sometimes you got to remember who God has been to you. You got to remind yourself of who He is. The Lord is my life. Whom shall I fear? And you are my reward. The solid rock upon which I stand. Your love is unconditional. You are Lord. So we call you by your covenant keeping name Yahweh. Reminders that you are immovable, invincible. You are not shaken, no matter what we are going through. Our refuge, our strength, our hope, our desire, our fortress. You are the reason we are. St Good afternoon. How are you doing? It's a blessing to be here, and it's a blessing to have each and every one of you tuned in already. For the Thursday Night School of Faith, our apologies, a bit of uh, technical issues that needed to be addressed, but then we are here and we are glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We shall say of the Lord, He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our fortress. He is everything that we need and desire. I hope that your day has been good. I hope that you have had a good day. And if you are in the areas of the world where it is your morning, you're just waking up right now, I pray that your day shall be good to the glory of God. No matter where you are, no matter what time zone you are in, welcome to the kingdom time zone right now. And God will surely bless you. Several people who have joined us already, Adera James saying, listening from Kisarian, um, General Odiambo Mark Odiambo, tuned in as well. Richman Kalibala, uh, God bless you, Pastor. Tuned in as well. Anes Jakinda, Betty Ludio, all joined in. Uh, and I have Leah Hola, God bless you as well. Rosie Openda, God bless you, Pastor. Um, George Baraka, Susan Kasembeli, God bless you as well. Uh, just each and every one of you, Israel Masika. It's a blessing to see each one of you coming in and coming on and tuned in for the service today. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. The Lord will do you good. The Lord will do you good. His intention is always to do you good. The scripture says the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come. That's Jesus talking. I am come that you may have life and have life in abundance. And so uh, seeing Karom Babu on board seeing Beryl Atem on board, Ma Maureen Munga on board. God bless each and every one of you as you just come on as well. Bonnie Tinder watching. Pastor Abraham Kanata following from Meru. And it's a blessing to have you as well. Penina Kamau tuned in. God bless you. Glory be to Jesus. Maureen saying from um, Vihiga County. And we want to just know that you are watching. You are tuned in kindly. Help us to, you know, uh, hold a watch party if you can. Invite your friends. Tag them right here on the pages that you're watching on. If you can't host a watch party, just tag them and invite them. Let them know that the service is here and we are ready to just bring in the word of God. Uh, God is always faithful. He is amazing and he is true. Glory be to Jesus. Caroline Munai, good to see you, woman of God. God bless you as well for just tuning in. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. I'm going to start with a word of prayer, even as some other people are joining us. I'm going to have the word of prayer coming in along, and then we get into the word of God. Praise be to God. Even if you're watching us from the locked down city of Italy and Old Town Mombasa, we're looking forward to having a great time with you in the presence of the Lord. Mary Ways and Sam Kibet, all of you, Rain Hadatella. Praise be to God. No matter where you are, the word of God will reach you. And Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come and share in your word, to hear from your spirit, and to be drawn to you. 
pray that our hearts will be yielded to you i pray that there will be clarity and understanding i pray that there shall be transformation heal the sick deliver the bound save the sinners restore the lost refresh the weary strengthen the weak and glorify your name in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and amen glory be to jesus christ all right so who else is just coming in who else is coming in i want to see that you're here uh my friend apostle william omole glory be to god we had some fellowship uh, with him earlier on before this mary chinzi you've been amazing you've been amazing on the online church judith jebet god bless you as well praise 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 be to god i want to try and wind up on the teaching that i started last week uh, on the teaching of he gave gifts to men and i want to try and wind up on that so i will go very quickly to the scriptures in hebrews chapter 13 we have shared quite a number of things in the time that we have been going through the scripture from last week wednesday up until now uh, i've shared about god having given us the gift of the holy spirit then i say that the holy spirit also came with a package of gifts so we have received gifts from the holy spirit who is a gift the holy spirit is to us a gift i did explain that a bit more on tuesday when uh, the household of cornelius got saved and peter was talking about that he said you know they have received the gift of the holy spirit in the same way that we have also received so the holy spirit is a gift he's a promise and he's a gift but he also has gifts that he brought to us and and so the scripture would say in first corinthians 14 1 desire spiritual gifts and these gifts were outlined in first corinthians chapter 12 that they're those who have the word of wisdom they're those who have the word of knowledge they're those who have healing they're those who have uh working of miracles some have received faith and administrations and all of them from the same gift so he talks about we have diversities of ministries by the same spirit we have differences when it comes to matters of activities but it is the same lord uh, we have different ways of operations but we have the same god so the spirit is a gift and the spirit also came with gifts and has given us gifts uh, so we have discernment and we have word of knowledge word of wisdom working of miracles administrations they're the gifts of the spirit um, including the speaking in tongues and he says even the interpretation of tongues so you find that in first corinthians chapter 12 but then again you find that the gifts are not just limited to abilities that were given to us so we have the gift the first one as the holy spirit the second as the abilities that were given to us which we call the spiritual gifts but then we also have gifts in the people that god has sent to us and so in ephesians chapter 4 from verse 7 all the way going to verse 16 he talks about that when he says when he ascended on high the spirit expressly says this when he ascended on high he gave gifts to men and uh and he took captivity captive and he gave gifts to men and verse 11 he begins to talk to us about how he gave to some apostles some prophets evangelists pastors and teachers for the equipping of the body so these men that were given gifts became gifts in themselves they were given gifts to function for the purposes of the ministry and they became gifts themselves and they became gifts for the equipping of the ministry for equipping of the ministry uh, now the new living translation i like what the new living translation says it says now these are the gifts christ gave to the church these are the gifts christ gave to the church so and then he says the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers these are gifts to you the apostles uh, and and the pastors and the prophets evangelists the teachers are gifts to you the new living translation would call them that that these are the gifts that christ gave to the church so I need us to understand that these people received divine enablement and they received grace and they received abilities so that they can become a gift to the body as well verse 12 the scripture says so that they may equip the saints they may equip the saints for the work of the ministry so these men are not endowed with the holy ghost and with the gifts of the spirit just for themselves but they are endowed because of the people they are gifted for the people so they become a gift now i talked about the i talked about the element of the packaging of the gift as well i say that when you buy a gift you package it and when you give it out to anybody before they see what is on the inside when they receive the box they say they have received the gift they have not yet seen what is inside but they have decided that it is a gift why because they have seen it wrapped in a certain way 
but for you to really get into what is the gift you have to unwrap the box and pull out whatever was bought whatever was made whatever was sown whatever has been uh, has been created and put inside that box now so when you receive the package you already know you have received the gift and this is how we are supposed to look at the gifts that christ has given to us that even when you receive just the package before you draw from their wisdom their wells their knowledge their understanding before you draw from their anointing you must consider the person to be a gift you must look at them from the point of being a gift now so many times we are distracted by what we know about them as humanity for example uh they say but jesus is the son of joseph and his brothers and and his sisters live among us so they could not see what was on the inside of him because they were stuck at his humanity and a lot of people fail to draw what is in the man because they cannot go past the man that they know look at what the scripture says in proverbs chapter 20 before we go into quite a number of other scriptures as well proverbs chapter 20 proverbs chapter 20 glory be to jesus the scripture says in verse 5 counsel in the heart of man is like deep water but a man of understanding will draw it out counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water but a man of understanding will draw it out which means that no matter how loaded how how gifted how anointed how wise how powerful a man of god is if you do not know how to draw out what they carry you will never get what they carry you have to learn how to draw what the person carries now you would be unwise to decide that you will not draw water out of the pot because the pot is made of clay the fact that the pot has been made of clay does not negate the fact that the water which is inside it is genuine water you must learn how to demarcate between the content and the vessel that the vessel may be the vessel of clay but the issue is does it have water when you were thirsty you were not very very considerate of whether the water is in a clay pot or it is in a different kind of vessel all you want to know is there water in there and is the water clean you want to know the deposit that is in there so that you draw it out now sometimes because of our perception or in fact how we have become familiar with one another sometimes we do not draw out the real gift which is in the gift of the people god has sent to you because we are stuck at the place of the vessel so we see this clay pot and we feel like nothing good can come out of the clay pot there cannot be clean water in the clay pot but the one who made the clay pot made sure that it would carry water one without leaking the water two without having the water to be dirty but then we decide if it is in the clay pot then i cannot receive it i cannot take it sometimes we just do not understand how to open up the clay pot and draw the water that it has the law of demand and supply works even with the anointing the law of demand and supply works even with the anointing if you do not place demand there shall be no supply the demand that is placed on the spiritual things is called faith the demand that is placed on spiritual things is called faith if you can have faith then all things become possible you can have the most anointed teacher around you you can have somebody who is gifted and graced in prophecies and miracles and healings and teaching and all kinds of spiritual resources that they carry but if you do not put the demand of faith you will never draw out of the anointing that is in their lives because when you are drawing from the anointing you are actually drawing from god the anointing on the inside of them is the habitation of god and his power in the lives of these people 
without faith it is impossible to please god so if the vessel is a carrier of god on the inside you cannot reach the god on the inside of the man except you operate by faith you cannot reach the god operating on the inside of the man if you don't operate by faith so if you go by fact the fact may tell you that the person is your neighbor the fact may tell you that you have grown up together the fact may tell you that you have known this person for so long the fact may tell you that they are younger or they are too old or they are too light or too dark the fact may tell you that they don't have as much money as you have the fact will give you other things for you to focus on but it will take faith for you to see divinity inside that man and it is something that even in the day of Jesus, people struggled to receive. Not everybody could see the divine inside the human Jesus. So I go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Glory be to God. The book of John chapter 1. hallelujah verse 29 the next day jesus saw sorry the next day john saw jesus coming toward him and he said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world this is he of whom i said after me comes a man who is preferred before me for he was before me i did not know him i need you to consider the scriptures i did not know him but he that should that he but that he should be revealed to israel therefore i came baptizing with water look at what he says i did not know him in verse 31 but that he should be revealed to israel i did not know him but that he should be revealed to israel because grace has to be revealed to you grace has to be revealed to you i'm going to come back to this portion of scripture but let me show you something in second corinthians chapter 5 before we go back to that john chapter 4 john, john chapter 1 second corinthians chapter 5 oh praise be to god praise be to god the scripture says in verse 16 of second corinthians chapter 5 he says therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known christ according to the flesh he says therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known christ according to the flesh yet now we no longer know him in the same manner verse 17 therefore if anyone be in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new you cannot draw from a person until you begin to look at them as the person they are outside of the flesh you cannot draw from a person until you begin to see them as the person that they are outside of the flesh if you look at them in the flesh and consider all the other things and the factors that i've talked about um human factors and financial factors and social factors and you you look at all the familiarity that it, you would have anything that would make you feel that you're either equal above or better than them you can never draw from them you have to see the man for who he is in the spirit you have to see whoever they are in the spirit and that's why i talked about it's got to be by faith you've got to see the person for who they are in the spirit you've got to look at the man jesus and see the lamb of god you've got to see the stammering moses and see the deliverer you've got to see the paul who has probably not the kind of body that you would feel like would be respectable they said 
that in presence he is despicable but in his letters he is mighty you have to go beyond his physical look and go into the wealth that has been put on the inside of him that wrote two-thirds of the new testament you have got to go beyond the flesh and get into the realm of the spirit and you cannot do that until you begin to operate by faith if you don't relate to the person based on faith you will be stuck at what the human flesh is and may never receive what god put on the in the person for your sake that's why we read the scripture that i first read which was there is counsel in the heart of a man in proverbs 20 verse 5 there's counsel in the heart of a man but a man of understanding will draw it who is this man of understanding understanding is that you know this man even though i know him in the flesh i really don't know him because we do not know men after the flesh let's look at ephesians ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11 sorry ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11 before we get back to that john i know our, our kept us and our fingers in john but ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11 it's familiar scripture but we normally pick up a certain portion of it and then we don't go the whole mile with that ecclesiastes chapter 3 now the scripture says to us in verse 11 oh he has made everything beautiful in its time he has also put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that god does from the beginning to the end he has made everything beautiful in its time he has also put eternity in their hearts do you realize how much god has put in the hearts of men he says he has put eternity in their hearts so that no one can find out no one can find out the work that god does from the beginning your destiny is a mystery your abilities are a mystery you don't even know who you are who you have become or rather who you are becoming uh, and who you will become in the next 10 years you may have an idea you may you may have uh, a little bit of leakage through prophetic word or through god just speaking into your spirit but you never know the exact magnitude and the details of who you will become in the future he leaves that to be something that is hidden to us so that we can continually keep on pursuing him now he has set eternity the means that you can never really say you know anybody if you only know them in the flesh you can never really say you know anybody anybody if you only know them in the flesh because within that flesh there is eternity within that flesh there is divinity within that flesh there are purposes yet to be revealed a lot of people make the mistake of getting stuck sizing up somebody sizing up somebody trying to figure them out and they miss out on grace because they're so so bent on sizing up somebody because there's a way we we always want to compare ourselves with the other person to see whether they deserve our respect or not we want to see whether they deserve honor or not so we want to know how old are you so that we know whether we are older or younger than them we want to know where did you go to school so that we see whether they went to a better school than we did or not we want to know um, how much they have so that we can size ourselves and say oh i thought he was better he's not, he's not too high he's not too far above me there is that demonic competitive spirit that keeps on coming into people and causes them to miss out on divinity because they are stuck at the place of humanity in fact i will say today that this generation this generation has so much pressure on ministers because they have to literally try to become all things even jesus did not carry this level of pressure because they have to they nearly have to prove their calling not by the word that they speak and the miracles but by all means you know they nearly have to prove their calling in every way they have to be the coolest pastor they have to be built up they have to look good they have to dress the finest they have to drive the biggest they have to live the largest they have to do all of these things just to try and prove to the people that god is with them and they are receiving pressure that is not from the scripture it is because we are stuck at the place of only receiving from what we can see with our natural eyes 
And so sometimes we go past people who have got great callings, they've got great wisdom, they've got great anointing, and they don't have so much of the outside trappings, but then they carry God on the inside. But nobody believes they carry God because their outward does not look like what we think represents God and we miss out. What you must do is identify the God in the man identify the god in the man and connect with the god in the man connect with the god in the man let's come back to that john chapter one before i share that even further glory be to jesus millicent murunga watching pastor chris bravery god bless you george mitau praise be to jesus why rimwa karyuki always a blessing judy rule minor god bless you all of you who were just tuned in susan massey uh mark MC, is it Mark or MC or Weedy? God bless you. All right. Um, there's one day, Ota, Nyakwara Uta. God bless you. Watching as well. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. We go back to that John chapter 1. And it says in verse 29 again, we go back to that um, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but, he, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. I did not know him, but I knew that he should be revealed. Now look at what verse 32 says. And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained on him. John says, I saw the Spirit. I can recognize the anointing upon this man. I saw the Spirit come from heaven, and like in the form of a dove, and remained upon him. I did not know him. He says that the second time. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him this is he who baptizes in the spirit john says i did not know him i didn't know his qualifications i had not followed him nobody had told me about him i had not even known his age i had not even known where he lives i had not even known anything about him but what i knew is i saw the spirit descend upon him i saw i saw divinity on this man and the one who sent me to baptize told me whoever you see the spirit come upon and remain upon that is he that will baptize with the holy spirit so john is saying my connection to him when you hear me say this is the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world my connection to him is number one based on revelation and number two is a spiritual connection it is a spiritual connection and it is based on revelation because i came baptizing so that he would be revealed i came baptizing so that he would be revealed when i saw the spirit come upon him then i knew that he was the one that god had been talking about that the father had been talking about so john says my connection my knowledge of this man is not in where he has come from it is not in who brought him up i may not even have the genealogy of this man i don't even know whether he in fact john does not say i know he's my cousin john does not say i knew his mother john does not say my mother told me about this man john says this man needed to be revealed but when i saw the holy ghost come upon him i knew this was the lamb of god that uh, causes the sins of the world to be removed you've got to identify you've got to recognize you've got to see the god inside the man for you to receive the man as a gift from god you've got to see the god You've got to see the God inside the man and connect to the God inside the man for you to receive the man as a gift. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So John teaches us how to have understanding. We've got to go beyond the natural. We've got to go beyond the natural. Remember at one point when John was in prison in Matthew chapter 11, when he was in prison, he sent his disciples to Jesus. And he said to them, go and ask him, are you the Christ or should we look for another? It's Matthew chapter 11 and verse 3. He says, go and ask him, are you the Christ or should we look for another? He did not say, go and ask him, are you my cousin or not? He did not say, go and ask him, are we related or not? He did not say, go and ask him, are you the son of Mary or not? He says, are you the Christ? 
are you the Christ? John at no point ever looked at Jesus as his younger cousin. John kept on seeing divinity inside of this man. That's why he was able to lay his life down for Jesus. He was able to lay his life down for Jesus because he saw divinity in this man. And he understood the purpose of this man. Because again, once you see that divinity, once you see the anointing, once you see who the person is in the spirit, then it becomes easy for you to understand purpose. Glory be to Jesus Christ. He says, are you the one who is coming or should we look for another one? He was caught up in, who is the Christ who is supposed to come? So if you are the Christ, let us know. I want us to go back to John chapter 1. Hallelujah. I want us to go back to John chapter 1. Verse 43, the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Do you realize that sometimes we are caught up in this place? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I've seen this man grow. I've seen this person. I've seen this lady. I know her issues. I know her struggles. I know when she didn't have rent. I know when her children couldn't go to school. I know this man. I know when he was working for that company. I know when he was kicked out of school. I know who he was 20 years ago. The other day, the other day, somebody uh, had posted something. Just a friend had posted something that was a little bit just, you know, to appreciate me in something and then one person that i don't even know came up over there and said oh you know god is so good uh, i remember what this man did i don't know in 1990 what and so i couldn't quite remember what he was saying but i'm thinking to myself my good god the the time he's talking about people who were born before that after that time have graduated from college and this man is stuck to something whether it is good or bad imagine somebody stuck in the 1990s the people who were born after whatever time he was talking about have been born they've grown they've graduated they're working and he's still trying to think i'm supposed to be the person that he knew in the middle early 90s and i'm thinking you see how people are crazy you get stuck to something and you figure you feel you have figured out somebody and you know somebody and you do not think that they can go beyond that or they can become better than that and so you were stuck at a certain place there's some of you who do not receive the gifts of god that come your way because you are stuck in your perception of who they are supposed to be and even when it is obvious in your sight that god has raised them and god has blessed them and god has made them who they are you will struggle with it because you want to look superior or you want to feel equal and you want to feel like there's no way this person can be better and your perception is denying you the opportunity to receive help from the gift of God which would just require you to humble yourself glory be to Jesus glory be to Jesus glory be to... it is difficult to change people who have known you for long it's difficult to change people who have known you for long well some people do change but it's difficult to change people who have known you for long praise be to Jesus now Nathaniel says can any good thing come out of Nazareth can anything good come out of Nazareth Philip says come and see Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and he said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there's no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How did you know me? Why did Jesus say this to Nathanael? Because he wanted Nathanael to encounter the divine person that he was. He wanted Nathanael to encounter divinity. So he decided to pick up Nathanael by a word of knowledge and say to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. So Nathanael then says, How come you know me? How you've never met me? You've never been around me? How did you know that? How did you know that I'm a strict Jew? How did you know that I'm a strict Jew? And Jesus said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel say, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Why? Because now he has encountered divinity. 
he has encountered the divinity see how he was going to miss out on jesus just because he was stuck in tradition in custom in myth he was stuck in all this you you know the the legends that will say nazareth cannot bring out anything good there are certain families nothing good comes from there there are certain regions nothing good comes from there if you meet this kind of a person this is how they are you'd under you you'd be shocked at how much you were robbed by stereotypes you'd be shocked at how much you are robbed by stereotypes if you marry people from this ethnicity they will be like this if you go to this live in this place it is like this if you were dealing with this kind of a people they will be like this and you form an opinion out of people who have formed their bias based on stereotypes and you never get to know a person for themselves you never get to know a place for it for yourself you never get to know a business for yourself you never get to uh, interact with people for yourself and make sound judgment and so your perception and your biases and your prejudice is causing you not to receive from the gifts that god sends to you and sometimes what you're praying for has been packaged in the form of a man but because you're waiting for an angel you cannot receive it because an angel is not coming an angel is not coming glory be to jesus now look at what jesus says in verse 50 jesus answered and said because i said to you i saw you under tree you now believe you will see greater things than this i just gave you a little bit and now you believe and he says you will see greater things than these i want to go back into a scripture that i read the other day as well in john chapter 4 who glory 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 be to god it's good to see you pastor titus uh gabriel omondi good to see you just jose blessings good to see you janet masika joy yeshua each and every one of you appreciate you thank you for tuning in glory be to god glory be to god uh evans ndungu gishuru the lord bless you as well look at what it says in john chapter 4 uh, and verse 9 the woman said how is it that you being a jew ask a drink from me a samaritan woman look at look at how she's being hindered from experiencing the power of jesus she's being hindered from experiencing liberty here is a man who is able to change her entire life here is a man who is able to give her identity and purpose and assignment and direction but all she sees is a jew and all she sees in herself is a samaritan and she says how is it that you being a jew ask a drink from me a samaritan woman for jews have no dealings with samaritans how many breakthroughs have you missed just because you were biased how many times has God wanted to visit you and you could not receive it just because you were biased against the vessel that God was using? How many times has God come in a way that is different from the way you were used to and you missed out on God because you thought just because you're a Samaritan, God needed to use a Samaritan? How many times have you missed out on a prayer item, on a prayer that has been answered just because the packaging was not as good as you thought it should be and I, I would stretch this a little bit beyond the gifts of the men of God that I'm talking about today because some of us have even prayed for things like jobs and the first job that opened looked like something that was below you it looked like something that was beneath you and you missed out on God because you were walking by sight and not walking by faith if you have been anointed a king as David was and you were sent into the palace to go and play the guitar you can think of it as a way of preparation for you to get into the throne you might as well also think of it as you being demeaned and being diminished and your anointing not being respected and you lose an opportunity to learn how to run a palace just because your ego your ego cannot permit you to see things different from how they are i tell you this i tell you anytime you see somebody with a huge ego they have they have a diminished personality anytime you see someone with a huge ego they have a diminished personality the ego is the expression of their insecurity and so sometimes we think that people are subjecting us to bondage david understood 
David understood nobody can take away the anointing. Nobody can take away purpose. Nobody can take away the gift. Nobody can rob me of what God has given to me. But if I have to go into the palace and play the harp for Saul, I will use the opportunity for me to learn everything that I need to learn. Sometimes we miss out on good jobs and God jobs. We miss out on spouses because they did not come the way we thought they should. I pray that God will open your eyes. I pray that God will open your eyes so that you do not miss out on opportunities and people that God is sending your way. That you will not miss out on the gifts that God is sending you. I pray that your natural thinking will not hinder you from receiving things that you have prayed for in the spirit. I pray, I pray that your biases will not cause you to let things pass your way which God intended for you. But just because it was not packaged in the way that you were prepared for, then you let it pass, then you miss it, then you let it go just because it didn't not come speaking the language you prefer it did not come dressed up the way you wanted it did not come smelling the way you would prefer it to smell it did not come it did not come in the perfection that you have always had in your mind it did not come in the way you have always dreamt and so you push it aside and you're allowing the clay pot to hinder you from drawing the waters because it takes a man of understanding to draw from the pot glory be to God Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I pray that your eyes open. I pray that your eyes open in the name of Jesus. I pray that your eyes open. I pray that your eyes open. I pray. I pray that when God is sending help your way, you will see the help. When God is sending people your way, you will see the people he's sending your way. Some of the people God is sending to you right now are not even in the form that they that you would want them to be. Some of the people that you desire to meet are coming to you broken. They're coming to you wounded. They're coming to you bone scattered and you have to prophesy and cause those bones to come together. You've got to cause the flesh to come together. I'm, let, me, let me just speak to the men of God who are watching right now because some of the people who are going to be the greatest uh, support to the ministry and people who are going to become the greatest sons and daughters of the ministry are coming with their bones scattered all over the valley and their bones are dry and their bones are dead and they don't have hopes. They don't even know whether they have dreams. They don't even have a job. They don't have a name. They don't have anything and it is up to you to begin to prophesy to those bones to come together and prophesy the sinews and prophesy the muscles and the flesh and cause them to come back together and cause the, the breath to come into them until they rise up a mighty army that is able to breathe the vision that you carry you have that assignment do not cast away anybody just because they don't come looking the way you want them to look and the flip side is that do not look at a man of God or a woman of God and decide they're not anointed just because they walk on foot or just because they ride a bicycle or just because they don't live a high life do not decide they're not anointed or you would never receive from them just because you have a preferred ethnicity or you have a preferred kind of a person or age or whatever other biases that you may have you need to find the God in the man you find the God in the man or the woman you connect to the God and the, and the God in the man and the woman you connect to the God that is in the man and the woman glory be to God you connect to the God that is in the man and the woman the woman is saying you are a Jew I'm a Samaritan you're a Jew I'm a Samaritan you'd be amazed at how many people would rather go to hell than be pastored or preached to by a female pastor they will argue, they will debate, they will fight, they will do everything. You'll be shocked at how many people would rather just go to hell because they have a cultural bias. Cultural bias. They have a gender bias. They have been trained, conditioned to think, oh my good God, somebody who's like this cannot pastor me. Somebody who's like this. I want to tell you something. We don't pastor you because we are qualified. We pastor you because we are called. If you forget everything that I've said tonight, I have just told you everything right there. We don't pastor you because we are qualified. We pastor you because we are called. We are called. And the one who called us thought that we could. The one who called us. The one who called us 
thought that we could. He saw everything about us. He saw everything that you are seeing, everything you are pointing out, everything you are saying disqualifies us. He saw everything of that. He saw that we could not speak well. He saw that we didn't have enough money. He saw that we didn't go too much to school or we went too much to school. He saw that we came from crazy backgrounds or even high backgrounds, whichever thing that hinders you from receiving from the men and women of God. God saw all of that and he still felt like calling the people he called. There is no information you're giving God that he does not know and God called those that he called even though they were not qualified in your eyes in any case the only one who knows whether somebody is qualified is the one who is recruiting for the job and if God is the one who is recruiting for the job and God says that this person is qualified then somebody else cannot say that the person is not qualified because then the standards of God would be subject to your standards and I don't think that your standards standards are higher than the standards of God I don't think your standards are higher than the standards of God glory 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 Jesus says to her in verse 10 I need to wind up now Jesus says to her in verse 10 Jesus answered if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water Counsel in the heart of a man. I go back to that Proverbs where we started. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. And a man of understanding will draw it. This woman is standing next to the well. And she is seeing a Jew. Whew. This woman is standing next to a well. And all she sees is a Jew. I was going to be naughty with that and play around with that word. Because when the Jew is the well then he is a jewel <laughs> but she's standing next to the well she's standing next to the well this is a gift around this woman and all she sees is that he is a jew and jesus says if you knew if you knew i pray that god will open your eyes so that ignorance does not keep you in bondage I pray that God will open your eyes so that ignorance will not keep you in bondage longer than you should. Glory be to Jesus. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is telling you give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Go to the book of John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Hallelujah to the living God. Hallelujah to the living God. Hallelujah. Verse 60. Glory, glory, glory. If you would just turn your Bibles to John chapter 6 and verse 60. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? When Jesus in himself knew that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you would see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It's the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Look at what he says. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The age profits nothing. Whether you have a rich pastor profits nothing really. <laughs> Whether you have whatever it is that would be your bias profits nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh prophets nothing most of the things that we look at as the qualification before we can accept ministry from men and women of god they will profit you nothing they will profit you nothing i tell you the truth they will profit you nothing it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you are spirit and they are life but there are some of you who do not believe Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that would not believe and would betray him. And he said, therefore I've said to you, no one can come to me unless the Father has granted it to them. Verse 66, from that time many of his disciples went back. Many of his disciples went back and they never walked with Jesus anymore. This is what delivered me long time ago. I mean, people left Jesus. 
people left Jesus. I'll, they, will, they will leave. They will leave. People left Jesus. People left Jesus. They will leave. They will leave churches. They will leave ministries. They will leave fellowships. They will leave friendships. They will leave marriages. They will leave. People left Jesus. They will leave jobs. They will leave places. They will leave. People left Jesus. They left Jesus. They left Jesus. I mean, they left Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> they left Jesus. They left Jesus. I'm trying to wind up because I've got some scriptures that I need to bring up. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and says, Do you also want to go away? <laughs> but Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have not many degrees, not a big house, not a big name, not a large ministry, not many buildings. That's not what they are talking about. They say, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. This is what made the 12 stick when everybody went. When everybody else was leaving Jesus, based on their biases and their feeling like, what kind of man is this? These people stuck over here because they had connected to Jesus in the spirit. They had connected to Jesus in the spirit. I need to say this to every pastor who's watching me right now. Never try to keep anybody who was disconnected from you spiritually. They will drive you crazy. They will drive you insane. Never try to keep anybody whose heart has left you. Even Jesus never preached a message to Judas to repent. Anytime the heart is disconnected, let it go. Because anybody who stays around you and is not connected to you is going to give you trouble. They will frustrate you. They will drive you nuts. They will cause you to lose sleep. They will give you sicknesses that you shouldn't carry. They'll make you have ulcers. You will be doing doing everything and they will still not believe you if it is not revealed in the spirit then it cannot connect in the natural if it is not revealed in the spirit it cannot connect in the natural why is it important for you to connect spiritually because ladies and gentlemen as much as there is the spirit inside the man there is the man that carries the spirit and the man that carries the spirit remember what jesus said to them he said does this offend you because that man will offend you. That man will disappoint you. That man sometimes will not understand you. That man sometimes will be too hard on you. If you do not connect with the spirit in the man, you will give up just because of how the man has probably treated you or not treated you or how they have related to you or not related to you. And you will give up on something that God meant for you to be a blessing. Peter says, you have the words of eternal life verse 69 also we have come to believe and know that you are the christ the son of the living god we have come to believe and know that you are the christ the son of the living god so we are not leaving you we have come to believe and know that you are christos spirit christos let's talk about this in matthew Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. How do I know who my pastor is? When they speak, the baby within you leaps. <laughs> they trigger a dream within you. They trigger what is on the inside of you. Whew. Glory be to God. I don't want to keep teaching this, but it feels like I need to continue a little bit. But look at verse 13. When they came, Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? They said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. So even when they are saying in John 6, 69, that we have come to believe that you are the Christ, they are not saying that from the flesh. Flesh and blood could not reveal this. This was a spiritual revelation. It takes revelation for there to be a connection. It takes revelation for there to be a connection. Glory be to Jesus. It takes revelation. Woo! 
it takes revelation for there to be a connection if it is not based on revelation then the connection will not stay hallelujah let's begin to wind up hebrews 13 where i was winding up the last time hebrews 13 verse 7 remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of god to you whose faith you need to follow considering the outcome of their conduct jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever do not be carried around by various and strange doctrines it is good that they have be established by grace not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them the heart needs to be established by grace not with foods so how is the heart being established by the word by the word by the word that word is brought and spoken to you by the words that he has sent that's why in verse 7 he says remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of god those who lead you those who govern you those who guide you who have spoken the word of god then in verse 17 he says obey those who rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account let them do so with joy and not with grief for that would be unprofitable for you let your pastor be glad that they are your pastor let your pastor be glad that they are your pastor let them be proud to be your pastor let them feel like it is a joy and a blessing to pastor you glory be to god do not be the reason why they feel like throwing in the towel don't be the reason a man of god wants to quit on the call don't be the reason why somebody feels I need to leave this town i need to leave this city i'm going to close that church just because either you or three and four five of you have come together and you have said we will make his life miserable how will that profit you it will not profit you and god will jealously guard the sheep that need to feed from that place god will jealously guard the sheep that need to feed from that place it will never be profitable to you so do not be the one who thinks that your job and your assignment and your calling and your anointing is to make pastors lives miserable in fact what kind of demon is that what kind of assignment is that there are people who will just make sure that they will throw out the first you will change your pastor bring a second one they will make sure that one is gone you will bring a third one they will make sure that one is gone you bring a fourth one they make sure that one is gone what kind of thing is that the scripture says be submissive be submissive be submissive it will not reduce you it will not cost you anything be submissive the scripture says god resists the proud and he raises the humble god resists the proud and he raises the humble god resists the proud and he raises the humble look at what he says in verse 18 pray for us pray for us the ministers not gossip us not post about us not talk about us pray for us for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably pray for us pray for us because we have a good conscience that in all things we desire to live honorably pray for your pastors pray for your leaders pray for those who feed you pray for your spiritual authority pray for them that is one of the ways that you make their lives easy pray for them you make them watch over you with joy first of all number one be submissive number two pray for them i had not put in notes but i will put it in note form right now just to help you very quickly number one be submissive if you want to make the life of your pastor easy number one be submissive be submissive that does not mean that you don't think that does not mean that you cannot ask for clarity that does not mean that sometimes you you don't have a different opinion but it just means that you are respectful and you're honorable and even when you feel that things need to be done in a different way you will still respectfully 
come in and bring out your opinion it does not mean that you will always see things the same way all the time you may have differences in views and opinions sometimes your opinion may be better sometimes your view may be better but it is how you bring it it is how you bring it with respect you don't try to undermine you do not try to overrule you do not try to bring down you do not try to tear down be submissive be submissive number one number two number two i have said that right there pray for your pastors pray for your pastors pray for your pastors if you pray for your pastor well enough if you pray for your pastor long enough if you pray for your pastor you will begin to see the change happening in their lives you'll begin to see them as powerful men of god because now you're connected with them in the spirit it is not it's, it's not right for you to be sitting and feeding from a certain house and then every single day you're just seeing other people as being powerful and powerful and powerful there's a problem in this nation there's a problem in this nation. Let me just address us as Kenyans and everybody who's watching, God bless you. But let me just address us as Kenyans. There's a problem in this nation. You will find Kenyans quoting every preacher from everywhere across the world apart from their own. Yet you sit in services every Sunday. Uh, well, when the churches were on, you sit in services every Sunday being pastored by these people and you never think that there's anything that they're saying that is powerful. You never think that they're deep. If you begin praying for them they will get into the level of depth that you require them to get into if you build, begin praying for them and not criticizing them you will begin to draw from them you will draw by faith you will draw by demand you will draw from their spirit when you pray for somebody you put a demand on their spirit to deliver and so when they come they will begin to deliver at the level of revelation because you have prayed and have put a demand of faith pray for your pastors paul says in philippians 1 19 he says i know i know that through your prayers and the supply of the spirit this is turning around for my good so i need you to begin praying for them and begin to pray that the word of god will find free course the word of god will come powerfully the word of god will come in truth in the name of jesus christ glory 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 first timothy chapter 5 let me give you the let me give you the number three. First Timothy chapter five. Verse 17. Igabo Shande Bagayabozai. Woo, Rekadosha Dabaha. First Timothy chapter five and verse 17. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially those who labor in the word and doctrine why verse 18 for the scripture says you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain and it also says the laborer is worthy of his wages number three honor honor your pastors he says count them worthy of double honor count them worthy if they've labored in your life in word and doctrine count them worthy of double honor there is this error that we have as well that we will sow seeds into people who we meet once and we will ignore the people who labor in our lives with word and doctrine teaching you not only one year two years three years this man and this woman is giving their lives over there and then one time they probably invite a guest to come in and you will just sow into this guest and no, there's no problem with that because you are also sowing into the kingdom but do not ignore the person that that takes care of you honor those who labor in the word and doctrine honor those people it is also good for a father to eat the fruits of his own children honor those who labor honor those who labor don't just be this troublemaker who is always looking for oh we want to see the books we want to see this well after you've given your tithe and offering you can still go and bless your pastor you can still go and shop for your pastor you can still go and bless the pastor's wife and say mommy you need to have this instead of talking about oh you know she has not changed her hair for four weeks sometimes the money to change the hair bought a microphone because you were not giving to them then the man is so caught up and the woman is so caught up in the ministry 
honor your spiritual father and mother do not muzzle the ox do not muzzle the ox do not be the person who always wants to make them you know we must humble them do not be the person who wants to make them humble make them be glad give them whatever you can in fact in galatians chapter 6 and verse 6 and verse 7 the scripture says let him that is taught let him that is taught uh, share in every good thing with the one that teaches him and he says be not deceived god is not mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap whosoever sows in the flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption whosoever sows in the spirit will of the spirit reap life i need you to begin being a blessing it may be little that you have but be a blessing the principle is greater than the premium if you bless them whichever way it may be little but ladies and gentlemen god is not mocked be not be be not deceived whatever you sow you shall reap you sow honor you shall reap honor you sow favor you shall reap favor you show you 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 will sow service you will reap service anything that you will sow anything that you will sow you will reap it back from where you sowed it glory be to jesus christ so the scripture says the number three honor them honor them honor is not the word of mouth ladies and gentlemen honor is not the word of mouth no 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 anybody can say i honor you it will be seen it will be seen it will be visible honor them with your substance honor them honor them in the, your conduct honor them honor them but i need you to learn the scripture says you shall not muzzle an ox while it trades you shall not muzzle an ox while it trades and the laborer is worthy of his wages glory be to jesus Number four is in this verse 19 of 1 Timothy chapter 5. <laughs> Woo. It says, do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Do not receive an accusation against an elder. What does that mean? Number four, protect the respect you have for the anointing protect the respect you have for the anointing do not be the facilitator of gossip against your pastor do not be the administrator of the groups that will tear down your man and woman of god protect the respect you have for the anointing the scripture says do not receive an accusation against an elder yet even when it comes from two or three witnesses there is a way to handle that do not be the person who always wants to know you always want to know what's going on every gossip that comes you want to know they've got to bring it to you your house has become the altar of sacrificing men and women of god your house is the altar your your shop your business place is where when people want to assassinate somebody's character they come there they lay it on the altar that you have raised in your house your shop in your business in your office and they will slaughter people tear them apart pull out the kidney and pull out the lungs and cut the heart and cause there to be bleeding and they say nothing about it and you say nothing about it and you are so delighted then you sit over there and say i did not say anything you must make sure that if anybody wants to do that kind of madness they're not doing it in your space they're not doing it in your house because an anointing you do not respect you will never attract an anointing you do not respect you will never attract glory be to jesus christ glory be to jesus christ glory be to jesus christ hallelujah i want to pray i want to pray pray for your pastors Whew. submit to them pray for them honor them through your giving and support protect the respect that you have for them protect it Ooh, <laughs> protect it don't be the person that easily speaks against your spiritual authorities i will talk about that on sunday night i thought i was going to finish this today I will talk about that on Sunday night. For those who will say, well, man of God, I'm not sure about that. I will talk about that on Sunday night. This message is to educate you, to illuminate you, not to intimidate you. 
it is to illuminate you not to intimidate you it is for you to get knowledge and get understanding from the scriptures not to intimidate you it is not a threatening message it is an enlightening message if you are out there you have never given your life to jesus i would like to give you the opportunity to give your life to christ joe clement mukoko my brother god bless you it's good to see you it's good to see you it's good to see you praise be to jesus praise be to jesus praise be to jesus ah hallelujah 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 if you've never given your life to jesus i want you to receive christ today say after me jesus i believe you are the son of god i believe you came in the flesh i believe you were crucified you died you were buried but on the third day you rose again i believe that you ascended to heaven and you are seated at the right hand of the father i believe you're coming back again so today i confess that you are the christ and you are my savior my lord and my god from this day i renounce sin and from this day i belong to you amen if you pray that prayer i pray father god in jesus name that you will guide these ones that have given their lives to christ i pray that you will guide them you will uh, teach them you will show them the way to go i pray that you will give them understanding hunger for the word of god lead them into right fellowship in jesus mighty name i pray that you will be able uh, you know to find a place to fellowship connect with us contact us let us know send us a message on the inbox also on the number plus two five four zero seven two one five five six one five nine zero seven two one five five six one five nine you can text us in case you need more prayer and counseling we'll be there for you but you can as well just send us a, a text on inbox and we will get in touch with you we want to know that you gave your life to jesus christ and that will be a blessing to us as well you can go ahead and testify to your family and your friends everyone who's around you let them know that you gave your life to jesus it's an amazing thing i know the burdens are lifted from now on you belong to god you belong to christ the old has passed away the new has begun you're a new creation you are called by the name of the son of god and you belong to the family of heaven in the name of god and in the name of jesus christ so testify testify let people know you have given your life to jesus go ahead also get yourself a bible and begin to read from the books of matthew mark luke and john just getting from the scriptures in the gospels to get to know who is this jesus what did he do how did he leave oh how did he die why did he die go ahead and just begin to study the word of god i'm praying that when the churches uh, begin to gather and congregate again god will lead you into a fellowship that will nurture you grow you build you up and raise you and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified i pray right now father god because when jesus died on the cross he did not only save but he set us free from every affliction and pain i pray for everyone who's battling with their health right now everyone who is afflicted and everyone who has pain everyone who has pain in their physical body are commanded to leave right now receive healing in the name of jesus christ of nazareth receive healing from every infirmity from every disease from every sickness from every atrocity from every affliction receive healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now in jesus mighty name i pray for those who are going through financial trouble i pray for those who are having trouble in their family their marriages with their children with their parents i pray that there shall be an answer and a miracle supernatural intervention right now in jesus name may god grant the desires of your heart in the name of jesus christ glory be to god glory be to god i feel in my spirit to declare one more time over this nation that the environment be hostile to the spread of any disease in the name of jesus christ i release heat over this environment hostility to the spread of every perception and every reality of any pandemic in the name of jesus christ we dry it up to the roots in the name of jesus i want you to go ahead and give your offerings right now if you have been blessed i pray that you will be a blessing as well to the ministry i pray that you will be a blessing to us as well so go ahead and get your offering if you have your tithe and you want to pay your tithe go ahead glory be to jesus sophie hope 
when Yoik is saying third time to hear this sermon this season, praise God, then that must be the Lord who is speaking right now. Glory be to Jesus Christ. That's a confirmation for you. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So go ahead, get your tithe, get your offerings, and use the pay bill 655125 for your tithe, for your offering, for any gift and any support that you want to send. Use it. 655125 is the pay bill indicate that it is your tithe your offering it is a gift whatever it is indicate that in the place of the account and the lord will bless you greatly if you're using wave direct m pesa or you're using wild remit the number is plus two five four seven one three five nine six five five two plus two five four seven one three five nine six five five two if you're using world remit if you're using wave or you want to directly just send your offering via m pesa the lord bless you juma collins god bless you as well glory be to god glory be to god lord i pray for every giver i pray for every title i pray that the blessing from heaven above rest upon them i pray for increase and multiplication i pray for supply i pray that none of them shall be ashamed as they look unto you their faces will be radiant in the name of jesus bless the work of their hands bless the work of their hands give them grace and favor in jesus mighty name amen and amen the lord bless you and keep you and watch over you and cause his face to shine upon you it's been a blessing sharing the word of god with you tomorrow morning 6 to 7 a.m we're here for the morning mist tomorrow is friday so we rest then on saturday we come back at 3 p.m with a saturday starter then on sunday we meet at 8 30 for the first service it will be mother's day glory be to god so i celebrate all the mothers out there already but we will be having that on the sunday morning i'm not saying we will have mother's day i'm just saying that i celebrate them right now because the mothers are not here but sunday morning 8 30 a.m 10 30 a.m and then at 3 p.m uh we will wind up i'll wind up this teaching at 3 p.m on the sunday but sunday morning we're beginning a different teaching all together the nehemiah generation uh, a generation of rebuilders people who are able to rebuild their lives it will be amazing series that i'll be doing on the sundays in the morning so join us on sunday morning 8 30 10 30 and then sunday 3 p.m remember tomorrow morning 6 a.m to 7 and then every monday to friday we do that the morning mist we also have saturday starter uh which is on saturday at 3 p.m every monday uh beginning this past monday we have commonwealth we go into the scriptures and study wealth wealth creation wealth management we study stewardship so we'll be having that uh, together with Raina Atala as well every Monday 3 p.m. Every Tuesday is a Tuesday night victory service. Every Wednesday we have the winds of worship with the royal priesthood. Every Thursday like today is a school of faith. So just tune in, keep in touch, make sure that you have the notifications so that you do not miss out. As well, go to YouTube and subscribe both to the Covenant channel and to CJ Atemo. Go to YouTube, subscribe to the Covenant channel and to CJ Atemo. We are uploading our sermons over there and making sure that you can always go back and watch what you have watched before or what you missed. We also have the Covenant page, the Covenant channel page on Facebook. So you could go ahead as well and do that and follow on our, in all our social media platforms at NBCC underscore KE on Twitter and Instagram and CJ Atemo on every platform. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, all of them. Follow CJ Atemo. God bless you. Keep you. Watch over you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Until tomorrow morning, the Lord keep you and watch over you. In this place we say, Shalom Irene, peace and prosperity. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing shall be broken in your life. You're blessed for life. Go and do even as you have learned today. Amen. <laughs>